Hello everybody, uh, I am here with the example of the crank slider mechanism which I already have two videos um, posted on YouTube uh, solving this problem uh, using actually the IC method and the absolute motion approach but now I want to use the relative motion approach to solve this problem so basically uh, different method relative motion okay so we already done it for absolute and uh, IC method and now we want to try to use the relative motion approach so here we are given uh, basically the um, the dimensions B which is the crank is one meter the connecting rod has a length of two meters and at this instant Omega AB is given to be 10 radians per second as you could see rotating clockwise so this is basically omega of a b all right so uh, what we are trying to find at when the angle is equal to 30 degrees so when this theta equal to 30 degrees we want to find velocity of the slider which you could see clearly that d is gonna has no choice but to move or is confined to move horizontally within this uh, cylinder okay so the slider or the piston is moving uh, to the right rather okay um, so how do we uh, solve this problem by relative motion basically we use this equation so if you guys remember that in this equation if you say we want to find velocity of d we want to translate with b uh, with respect to b and we want to rotate about b so what we have to do is try to find uh, velocity of b so finding velocity of b is easy velocity of b is going to be r omega so that would be uh, that velocity of b would be perpendicular to this radius the length of the crank right uh, and i've shown you here velocity is r omega so that's b times omega ab a, b, b, uh, is 1 meters and omega ab is 10 radians per second so we get 10 meters per second notice that this angle here is got to be since this is already 30 degrees even though this doesn't look like 30 degrees here right uh, this must be 60 degrees then right because this is 30 right so that's what uh, we get 60 so here we go that's velocity of b so i'm going to plug in actually in this equation so this is the 10 meters per second at 60 degrees now what do, what do we know about velocity of d the only thing we know about velocity of d well we are trying to find the velocity by the way um i forgot to mention that when we solve this problem using the other two methods that i mentioned here the ic and the absolute we already know the answer the answer is 7.236 meters per second so velocity of d at this instant when omega ab is 10 radians per second is going to be that number moving to the right okay so back here so what do we know about velocity of d the important thing is to understand that velocity of d since it's confined to move horizontally to the right we just put its direction like that so you, that's very important you have to put that direction down all right what about velocity of d relative to b which is the rotation part you guys remember that means what velocity of d relative to b means find velocity of point d as if b is fixed so if we try to uh, do this uh, draw the bar at this instant which i've done already here for you so i'm just redrawing it here for you so if this is a bar or connecting rod bd make b fixed as shown here right what would be velocity of this point if b was fixed right so that would be also r omega velocity of d as if b is fixed r omega r is 2 so this is l equal 2 meters right and omega is omega bd by the way why is omega like that uh counterclockwise because you look at the direction of velocity of b and velocity of d how is this guy rotating is rotating counterclockwise at this instant if a b is rotating clockwise bd has to rotate counterclockwise so based on that direction of bd velocity of d relative to b should be downward 
By the way, you know that uh, you could also do this vectorially by doing omega cross r. But you guys remember that I mentioned that really it's much easier to solve this problem uh, by in the scalar approach instead of using the ijk business, you know, using that. Okay, back here. So r omega 2 times omega bd. So that will go right here. 2 omega bd, this is the velocity of d relative to b, so this was velocity of b, and this is velocity of d. So, uh, I forgot to mention that we need this angle at this instant, phi, this angle phi, and, this, and the reason you need that, that angle phi, because we have to figure out this direction, exact uh, direction of this. So here, it's very easy to find that angle. You could see that if this is 1, right, if this guy is 1, as shown here, right? And this angle is 30 degrees, theta is 30 degrees. This should be 1 sine 30, which is 0.5. And then in this triangle, right? Which is this triangle, basically, this one, right? Uh, if this is 0.5 and the length of the connecting rod is 2, then this angle, sine of that angle becomes opposite 0.5 over 2. So the angle becomes about 14 and a half degrees. That's why we have about 7 and a half degrees here, uh, 75 and a half degrees here. So here's the angle that I put here. So the, the, the rest of the problem is really easy. You have to equate horizontal and vertical components of the left side with the right side. Okay. So if you start with equating the vertical component, if you start with horizontal components, you have one unknown here and one unknown here, so that's not good. Start with the vertical component, set the vertical components equal, so no vertical component for this guy, zero. The vertical of this guy becomes 10 sine 60, and the vertical of this guy pointing down, so therefore it's negative. Two omega BD sine 75.52. Solve for omega BD, you get that. Okay? So let's go to the next page. I re rewrote this uh, equation again for you so you could see when we equate the horizontal components um, then we have velocity of d which we are looking for so this becomes the horizontal component of this guy becomes 10 cosine 60 right and the horizontal component of this guy would be positive 2 omega bd uh, cosine 75.52 put this value of omega bd 4.472 at this instant here so this is 4.472 and then solve, and we get exactly the same answer that we got. So velocity of d at this instant is 7.236. And remember, when we did this by IC method and absolute value approach, we got exactly the same answer. So I hope uh, you've seen the other two videos, so uh, hopefully by now you see how these three different methods, the, the similarities or maybe the, the differences, uh, actually each one is totally different than the other one. But they all we, we arrive at the same answer. As always, thanks for watching and listening.